Before we finish, let's look briefly at another program which will use a for loop. In this case, we want to calculate the final value of an investment of €1,000, which is invested at a rate of 8% for 10 years. First of all, let's look at the program working. And we click on the button to have our program calculate the value of the investment after 10 years. Now let's have a look at the code. In our program, we will use the double variable amount to store the deposit amount. And in line 8, we store the initial value of 1000 in this variable. To calculate the value of the deposit at the end of a year, we multiply it by 0 0.08, which is 8%, and add it to the original amount. And we store this value in amount, as shown in line 10. Alternatively, we could multiply the amount by 1.08, as in line 11. We need to do this for each of the 10 years. So, rather than writing our line of code 10 times, we include it in a for loop, where the counter runs over 10 values such as from 1 to 10. And when the loop is finished, we display the final amount as in line 13. Notice in line 13 that we are using the format currency function. This will display our amount in currency format, which means it will display with two decimal places and the currency symbol attached. If we want to see the value of the deposit at the end of each year, we can include an extra line inside the loop to display the value of i and the value of the amount as i changes. So this line will display the value of i, which will run from 1 to 10, representing the year, and then the amount for that value of i. Now let's run the program and look at the output. And again we click on the button and this time we see the value of i and the value of the amount displayed for each of the 10 years and then finally the amount at the end of the 10 years. Again in this example a for loop was the correct structure to use because in this case we knew that the calculation was to be performed 10 times. In this lesson we have seen how to use for loops to repeatedly execute a set of instructions when we know exactly how many repetitions we want. In the next lesson we look at some further uses of these loops.